Earlier this year in 2024, I got hit by a driver with Erie Insurance. So I was actually stopped right here in my lane. The guy was right over there and he just hit me right here. So I'm thinking, oh, he's just making a lazy left. There's no way he's gonna hit me. Surely he'll correct himself. What the fuck? It was 100% his fault. I proved it, they admitted it, and so did the guy who hit me, but they pulled a lot of scams to get out of paying up. They even did a bunch of stuff that was criminal if they could be proven guilty in court. I say it that way because there's a chance that some of the things they did were an accident, but I doubt that and you'll see why later. Either way, what they tried and what they've been doing to many others for a very long time is no different from stealing. So hi, uh, I'm Kevin and this is Louie, the owner of the body shop here at Sharp Auto Body. So uh, you mind telling us what insurance companies have done to people like me and you, like just run, run people who are watching through, through the whole process. There is something called the actual cash value of your car. Now by law, when you have insurance, they're required to pay for the repairs up to that point. But with me and many others, they don't want to. They'll give you a solid, trust me bro, and claim your car is worth half of what it actually is. Then they play stupid, gaslight you, pull a bunch of tricks, and hope you're stupid enough to fall for it. And Louis is the owner of this body shop. He was telling me they've been pulling stuff like that for years, but he was never able to get them to pay up. Sure, what's been going on for years now, and it got a whole lot worse through COVID, is what they do is they're short paying. So for example, if we send in a repair plan, so we no longer call it an estimate, after we do 100% disassembly, we itemize everything we need to fix the car correctly. You can see behind us that we're manufacturer certified. And then what we do is we look up the re repair procedures. So there's now specific things. So for example, when we did the repairs to your car, we had to aim the headlights. Mm -hmm. And so in aiming the headlights per Honda, we had to check the air pressure in all the tires. We had to make sure there's a 150 pound person sitting in the driver's seat. And we do all of that so that when we aim the headlights, they're gonna be exactly where they're supposed to be. Those are the kinds of things, checking the air pressure on some vehicles like Nissans, you have to check the coolant, the antifreeze, you have to unload the vehicle, you have to do a bunch of other stuff as well. But the insurance companies don't wanna pay for that. So they typically did exactly what they did with you. They wanted to pay about $1,000 for just over $6,400 worth of repairs. Yep. And so they've been doing this for quite a while now. One of the things that I said- uh, But before you jump in, uh, how long have they been doing this? I mean, you said quite a while. And, uh, yesterday when we were talking, you said they've been doing it for decades, but it just got really bad after 2020, right? Yeah, yeah. so they've been refusing to pay for things that need to be done for decades. Mm -hmm. Since COVID, it just got worse. And yeah. not, now they're literally 30, 40 cents on the dollar and, and they're refusing to pay for anything else. There are a number of, uh, when I was here, there was a, he had some letter coming from the mail where, um, I don't know if it was in the mail or whatever, but you had a, a document that showed about, uh, there, there's something called a, a third party adjuster. Remember that? Yes. And how, all right, people, they hire these third party adjusters if their policy allows it, their insurance policy allows it. And these third party adjusters, they will come up with the correct price. And then the insurance company will pay roughly around that. But with people like me and, and many others, they don't, which signaled to me that like they know they're scamming people. So Kevin brought up a very good point. So what he's talking about is a thing called the RTA, right to appraisal. So in the state of Illinois, as long as you don't have State Farm Insurance, State Farm Insurance does not have a right to appraisal. But I can show you files and files. So what Kevin's talking about in these files I'm talking about, it's the insured, the policyholder. So for example, it's not uncommon. We had Progressive try and tell the car owner that $3,200, $3,200 was all they needed to pay to repair their car correctly. We went through the repra repair appraisal clause with them. They used a third party estimator and we got paid over $13,000 to repair their vehicle correctly. Mm -hmm. So the insurance company is trying to short them $10,000. Yep. And what I try and explain to people, imagine going out to dinner and getting a steak dinner and it's a hundred bucks. They get some but, tofu. But, but yeah, but you like tell that. them, yeah, all I'm gonna do is pay 30 bucks. You're gonna get the vegetables and maybe the salad. Yeah, right? yeah. You're not gonna get the potato and the steak. Yep. And so it's the same thing. Now, in Kevin's case, he was a third party claimant, meaning he was hit by somebody that had Erie Insurance. Erie Insurance tried to pay him $1,000 on $6,400 worth of damage. And one of the things- they, Later on, it was, uh, they, they brought it up to, it was around, it was between like 3,500 and, and 4,000, something like 4,400, something like that. But 
they, they initially did this did this thousand dollar estimate, and they added in all these. Everything they said to me was very vague. They wouldn't answer questions, and I saw it as basically the take thousand bucks and fuck off option. So, yeah, yeah. And one of the things that Kevin's a hero here at Sharp Auto Body because we've never seen anybody go after an insurance company as aggressively as he did and consistently. And he did not did not let up. And not only did he get paid the entire amount that we needed to repair the vehicle correctly per Honda with all brand new Honda parts, as well as all his Honda's required repair procedures, but they also paid him on top of that. Can you explain that, Kevin? Yeah, yeah, they, they, they paid me, uh, it was about 2,500 bucks more than the original bill. And actually it was a little, little different because, um, all right, so, when I dropped off my car at Sharp Auto Body here, they originally uh, Sharp they originally quoted me a price. It was uh, I think it was six thousand four hundred twenty one dollars and fifteen cents or something like that. And uh, Erie obviously they had some huge problems with it, and they were like, oh, they're nitpicking it and saying, oh yeah, we're the experts here. We know how this works. Blah blah. blah. And long story short, they got Sharp to take off uh, some item on there. I think it was. It was a few hundred bucks. Eventually, I got it back just because I was so pissed off at him. I, was, I did it out of spikes. Like they, they lowered the price down to like 6,100 something, something like that, you remember? Vaguely, yes. yeah. Yeah, it was something like that. And I got that extra feedback just because they pissed me off so much. So, And one of the things, so Kevin just touched on something very important. It's amazing to me how people don't fight back with the insurance company. Insurance companies have never, ever, never, ever fixed a car. They've never fixed a car. They don't know how to fix a car. They don't know what's required to fix a car, yet they're gonna dictate the price to fix a car. Mm -hmm. And so imagine if you needed open heart surgery and the insurance company says, well, we're not gonna pay for the anesthesiologist. We're not gonna pay for the, the equipment. We're not gonna pay for the, the ICU after surgery. We're not gonna pay for any, that's insane. Yeah. And that's exactly what insurance companies are doing with, with automotive repair. And one of the things I'd like to st stress that Kevin did, like I said, he's a hero here at Sharp Auto Body, but the entire staff knows that he kicked butt with the insurance company and got all this paid for. One of the things that amazes me is why people back down or back off from the insurance company because the insurance company is telling them a bunch of lies. And legally, contractually, the insurance company's responsibility is to make you whole. So if you have $7,000, $10,000, $20,000 worth of damage to your vehicle, legally, contractually, they have to pay that bill. And I can tell you that the ones that we're talking about with Kevin mentioned with the re repraise, the return or right to appraisal, I'm sorry, right to appraisal clause, our clients are winning 100% of them, not 95%, not 90%, 100% of our clients. That, that, that's, that's that third party adjuster thing. Right. So. And 100% and 100, 100 of the time, our clients are winning and getting paid everything they need to be paid for us to repair the vehicle correctly. And so that's telling you loud and clear that the insurance yep. companies, to Kevin's point, yep. and, and in any other industry, it would be illegal. In any other industry, it would be called price fixing. But there's le legislation that the insurance companies get to get, a, get, to get away with this. How is it legal? Because they, they did whatever they did. And you can go online and see that State Farm specifically paid over $250 million in an out-of-court settlement because they were racketeering. They were paying judges and legislators in the state of Illinois. Serious? Yes. I, I, did, I did case law research before this video, and I'm going to show you later on. But and, and I saw a bunch of cases where the insurance company lost, and I'm going to give you some, but I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't research that far. But. Yeah, if you go look that up online, it, it made the news and... and yeah, they paid two hundred over two hundred fifty million dollars. Wow! In an out of court, Wait, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> no, for racketeering. Mm. And 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 the and the bad news is, and what I think is so criminal is, if you miss your payment for your insurance, they drop you like a hot potato. Yeah. But when when you oh yeah right when it's, it's always a double standard right when it's their time to to pay the claim, mm -hmm. then they and there's a book out called Delay, Deny, Defend, and that's what they do, right? They delay it, they oh, yeah. deny it, and then they'll, and then they they'll defend it. Yep, it's I, it's insane. Yep. All right. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up is that I'm doing this for him just for free. Neither of us are getting paid. There's no money being exchanged between us other than him already having fixed my car. That That's it from the insurance company's money. So I'm doing this just because I want to cause the insurance company, insurance companies, because I know Erie isn't the only one doing this. I want to cause them as much damage as I can. 
But, and I would like to add to that. I think that it's not even so much damage to the insurance companies as awareness to you, yeah. the car owner yeah. and a policyholder. You don't understand. People ask me all the time, well, who's a good insurance company? And I can tell you, Cincinnati, Acuity, Chubb, and then they say, I've never heard of those insurance companies. And I tell them, of course you haven't heard of these insurance companies because they're not spending billions of dollars on TV, radio, putting their name on stadiums. When you have a claim, we just did a claim for an Acuity client and she had 26. This Acuity Insurance Company? Yes. Okay. Acuity Insurance, thank you. Okay. Acuity Insurance, she had $26,000 worth of damage to her Ford Explorer. Acuity, that was our repair plan. We do 100% disassembly. We itemize everything the vehicle needs for a proper repair. And then we sent that to Acuity. Acuity simply turned around and sent us a check for the exact amount. So there are insurance companies out there that will pay 100% of the claim without all this hassle. But and, and here's the other thing I want to know. Listen, how can you expect the insurance company to pay you a claim when you're out shopping for the cheapest insurance? Yeah. And for most people, the second largest investment they ever make is their car. Yeah. And then they go shop for the cheapest insurance. And, and what are all the insurance companies that you see on TV? What are they? State Farm. Well, well, uh, Allstate, Progressive, yeah, yeah. Geico, Nationwide, Liberty Mutual. They're all competing on one thing. What? Price. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not selling you quality. They're not selling you customer service. They're not selling you anything but price. So now you've shopped for the cheapest price insurance, and then you wonder why you get a, a, a raw deal at the back end when you have a claim. It should be no surprise. And one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this, and we're not getting paid for this, it's because it's I believe it's our our right, our duty to inform you, the consumer, of what's going on with yep. these insurance companies, and at some point. My hope and my prayer is that somebody's going to hear this and see this that's got the power to go change the laws so all the people that have insurance don't get taken advantage of after they, they're, and right now, insurance is going through the roof. The price oh, yeah. of insurance oh, is yeah. going up. 40, 50, 60% people are having price increases, mm -hmm. but they're still, and they're getting tighter and tighter getting screwed. And, and, and paying less and less yeah. on what the claim is. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, how it's not illegal, I don't know. Well, I do know. They got the laws yeah. made for the way they want to do business for profit for them and nothing else. He brought up a good point, too. Uh, in, the, in the rest of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things he said a lot more about like what the actual problem is and how we fix it. Because the, the problem, I'm not going to get to it yet, but it's a lot more surprising than what you'd expect. I, I, I don't even blame the insurance companies for this stuff, but we'll get there later. I mean, like, no doubt they, they do have some effect. I mean, they, they are partly responsible, but it's not completely them. And you're raising your awareness on what they do and how to defend against it is that like, you have to do that. You have to. You have to have some self-respect and stand up for yourself because nobody's else, nobody else is going to do it for you. And, and I'd like to add something to that, yeah. Kevin. The reason why you need to stand up for yourself is because these cars aren't... I've been doing this for over 43 years. I've been in business for 43 years, and I had a couple years in another body shop before I went into business for myself. When I first started, you need to hammer a dolly in some Bondo, plastic filler, whatever you want to call it. Cars weren't the rolling computers they are now. These things are highly technical machines that are designed and engineered to be built and repaired a specific way for them to work again. I'm gonna give you just a quick example. They now have bumper covers that have a blind spot monitor behind them. The thickness of that bumper cover can't be more than 13 millimeters. If it's more than 13 millimeters, then that blind spot monitor, which is like a radar, going through that plastic bumper cover won't work correctly. And so now this vehicle that you've paid 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars for was repaired incorrectly because the insurance company sent it to a shop that isn't doing it the right way. Then at that point, you're now doing 60, 70 miles an hour down the freeway oh. with, with your family, your wife and kids in the vehicle, and you don't think there's anybody out there and you change lanes and then you hit somebody. I'm not kidding. This is that catastrophic it's that serious this is no longer tinkering around this is this is serious life or death stuff and the insurance companies and all their bean counters have done the math kevin and guess what they know they know that they would rather pay a couple million dollars in a lawsuit it's for a poor, fixing the problem for a poorly repaired vehicle because they're making so much flipping money by short paying all these claims. Yep. And again, these vehicles are highly advanced and they have to be repaired a specific way. And, and I'll give you just a quick story if I can. We have time. Yeah, for sure. yeah, go for it. So I had a gentleman come in and he was driving a brand new Suburban. 
and his wife had hit the front bumper. And he came in and he said, I've got two estimates for around 700 bucks. And I wanted to get a third estimate. So he comes in. Now he had, a, a, again, it's a Suburban. We're GM certified. So I, I look up some repair procedures. And this is a good example of he's got blind spot monitors. And I inform him that, look, we can't repair this front bumper cover. Two other shops had written this vehicle to repair the front bumper cover. I tell him loud and clear, and I printed them documentation from GM. I said, we can't fix this bumper cover per GM because we're going to make the bumper cover too thick and that blind spot monitor is not going to work. Mm -hmm. I wrote him an estimate for over $2,600 to put the front bumper cover on his vehicle. I never saw him again. I don't know where he went. I don't know what happened, but that's what we're up against. Mm. There's still a bunch of shops that don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to research the repair procedures, and they're not taking the time. And at that point, and guess what? He probably spent 700 bucks someplace. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I don't know what the liability is. I don't know what happened, but those kinds of things are going on all the time. All right, uh, last thing. I know how the internet works, and I know how people go, Oh, you talk to that guy who happens to believe this or that thing, you must be a bad guy too. Relax. His opinions might not be mine. We're just two people that happen to meet by chance, and that's that. So don't blame him or get mad at him because I have some belief that he might not have. Chill out. It's <laughs> just a video, okay? You hit the X button. I don't care what you do. Well, I, I can tell you that's not true for me. I care what you do, and you need to watch this to the end. But they, and I, then, I, I didn't, and then, well, I didn't but, well, and but, and what I want you to do is, is so I do a bunch of things in my life. But what I want you to do is I want you to go do your own research because you're going to find that what I'm saying and what Kevin's saying is the truth. Yeah. It's going on all over America, and I mean literally across the nation. I'm connected to a bunch of other shop owners on Facebook, and I can tell you these insurance companies are doing this across the country. This is not random. It's not in one market. It's not in one city. This is across the country. And again, I think it's our, our obligation and our duty to help inform and educate you. Yep. And I, I uh, just to add in one uh, one thing. When I said I didn't care, I didn't, I didn't mean like I didn't care about what's happening. I just mean like you know, <coughs> you you wanna you you wanna jump off a cliff without a parachute. <laughs> I don't suggest you do it, but hey, not my problem. You know, I I don't like thinking like that, but sometimes you gotta just let people who wanna destroy themselves just let them do it because they're gonna learn well, that way. And, and I think the, you know, the the bigger point to what Kevin's. And one of the reasons why he's a legend around here at Sharp Auto Body is because he had the courage to stand up and fight back. And that's what I want to encourage and inspire you to do from whatever the rest of the material. I haven't seen what he's got in this video, but I can tell you that he stood up and fought back and he got paid for everything on top of getting paid money for his time and energy that he went round and round with the insurance company. And they will pay, but you've got to be brave enough to stand up and fight back. I promise you it's not hard either. So I suggest you watch the end of this video, watch to the end of this video, and you'll be glad you did. In the end, I won out of court, and I got them to pay the full bill, which is about $6,421.15, I think, if I, I'll put it on the screen, plus about $2,500 extra, and I got to keep my car, which, in case you didn't know, if you deal with an insurance company, they do this thing called totaling your car, and then you have to sell your car to them, and you have to buy it back. I didn't have to do any of that. So you wanna learn how to do this? I'm gonna have timestamps on this page so you can jump ahead, but I strongly suggest that you watch everything all in one go because it will at least give you a, a basic understanding of what it takes. Plus, what I want to give you is something way better than how to beat insurance companies. And I won't do what I'm about to say in this video, but I also know how to beat bullshit traffic tickets, red light scam camera tickets, and how to beat pretty much any other scam, whether it's from the government or not. And I want you to learn how to do the same thing, which is what I'm going to, I'm going to about to lead you on that path. So if you want that, consider hiring me for the things I do. A good summary of that is on the homepage of my main site at cyphersanctum.com. You could also buy through the affiliate links I'll give, or at the bare minimum, share the original page for this blog instead of the video sites like Odyssey, Rumble, and BitChute, and so on, because I've been blacklisted for years and you helping me to get some exposure and more business will help encourage me to help you. So, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. So let's start off with my goal. My goal is to legally weaponize you against all tyrants with petty power, whether they're crooked city governments, crooked cops, crooked judges, crooked lawyers, 
crook politicians, red light scam cameras, crook banks, crook debt collectors, the IRS, crook school boards, or any rotten motherfucker that wants to try to rob you of your rights while living off your misery. And that applies whether they work for the government or not. And what I'm gonna tell you, technically you could use uh, to screw other people over, but if your p potential victim knows what they're doing and they know how, how the process goes, you're gonna lose and you're gonna deserve it. You know, kind of like how spoons don't make people fat. And if you choose to do everything I'm gonna say, your life is gonna be changed for the better so much. Like you're not gonna be living in fear of the government or any, any person with petty power. It'll last a lifetime and you will have the skills to be, essentially be your own lawyer. And you could also be a, law, a, a lawyer for someone else too. You just need something called a power of attorney, but that's another story for another time. And with that knowledge, you can stop injustices before they even begin. And knowing this stuff will also help you be able to read between the lines in the news and the media and all that stuff. And it's kind of like having, it's kind of like giving you psychic powers, but it's not psychic power, it's not magic, it's just logic. You know, so you can like kind of predict the future. But to do that, I have to get you to look in the mirror and to see things the way they are and not the way you think they are. And this requires very critical thinking of yourself. In other words, you have to humble yourself. In fact, legal stuff and legal jargon isn't even that important for any of this. But your awareness of reality and how things actually are, that is the most important. Now you might be thinking, how the hell does being humble have anything to do with the law or anything to do with beating an insurance company? And the answer is because any crooked person, whether they work for the government or not, is just a symptom of a bigger problem. And the only way we're ever gonna beat these kinds of people with petty power is by being more righteous, cunning, and persistent than they are. You have to be better at knowing the truth and following that path than they are at trying to screw you over. Otherwise, it's no different than swapping Coke, Coca-Cola for Pepsi. I mean, they're both gonna rot your teeth and give you a lot of other health problems, so why drink either? They're both garbage. So because this video is about how to beat insurance companies, I'm about to lead you on the path to learn how to represent yourself in court. I promise you it's not long, it's not hard, and it's not expensive. And it's the only way you will beat them because if they fear you, they won't fuck with you. And before you go away and go, oh, I'm just gonna give up now because it's, it's gonna be too hard, just hear me out for a little bit because if you choose to do what I'm gonna say, you won't be living in fear of them anymore. Just wait a couple minutes. In fact, to make sure everything I'm about to tell you worked, uh, once I learned it, I intentionally went out and did things in front of cops hoping that they would give me a ticket because I wanted to make sure it worked, and it does. And when I did those things, uh, I didn't put anyone in danger. I, the city just set up some scams nearby, and I stood up to it, and I won. And with some of those things, I even intentionally admitted to the cop, yeah, I just did that thing you told me not, or the sign told me not to do, and you know, to, to put myself at the biggest disadvantage. And even then, when I went to court, I still won. To this day, I've beaten scam traffic tickets, red light scam camera tickets, debt collectors who tried to collect on those tickets I didn't pay, as well as this recent thing with the insurance company, city governments, and everyone else involved. Like, uh, on the first time I did it, I had a, there was a crook judge who didn't give a shit about what I said. And I pointed out case law, everything, proving my point. He just ignored it all. So I beat the crook judge, and there were at least two lawyers who were teaming up with him, but I think it was about three because I, th I saw three, but two were definitely involved. And the judge was arguing the lawyer's position when you know there, there's supposed to be a separation of powers. You have executive, legislative, and judicial. And the judge was basically trying to do the, ex the, executive, the, executive, the executive's power, plus two crow cops. So yeah, I beat them all. And concerning all those things, uh, it's been about six or seven times that I've won but there have been like, dealing, you know, dealing with the court and the whole process of these, these people with petty power. But there have been a hell of a lot more concerning, like you know, just verbal things on the spot, like uh, you know, during the scandemic, for example, people trying to get you to wear a mask and I didn't wear one the whole time. So there have been countless other verbal demands people have made to me and other things and I've won every time because I know the process, I know how it works, I know my rights and I want you to know them too. And you can apply the, the process I want you to learn to any part of the law. So for example, if you were accused of murder with the path I'm about to lead you on, you should be able to 
with enough time, enough, enough practice, uh, I'll get to that later, you should still be able to beat it, uh, assuming you didn't do it. And it's a lot easier and cheaper than you think too. You don't need to go to law school. You don't need to spend years of time, nor thousands of hours of research, nor thousands of dollars. With 250 bucks, at least as I say this, it's about five to six hours of video that you're gonna have to watch. And after that point, the process is gonna become so demystified that you wonder what, what you were ever afraid of. And once you do that, I feel confident saying that if you're at least 16 years old and you have basic English comprehension, with, after watching those videos, if you apply yourself for about two weeks, or with serious intent, like you want to do this, if you have basic English comprehension, you should be able to beat these insurance companies who are doing something similar to you. And what you'll learn actually applies to any part of the law. It, it's not limited to insurance companies. And once you do that, even just watching these five or six hours of video, after that, you're gonna realize why you were never taught this stuff in the public fool system. Because if you knew it, you wouldn't be seeing all the injustices we have today. Now, if you're afraid of the legal system, uh, the stuff I'm about to show you, they were made by lawyers. I know how things work, uh, the public fool system, TV, movies, the media and all that stuff, they created this arcane mystery about the legal system, all of them. The media, Hollywood, TV, pretty much everything. And I guarantee you it's not hard. And they keep these lies going to make you think it's hard so that you become stupid, hopeless, and dependent on them. So, you, you know, it makes you desperate and easy to control. And I'll bet some of you are rightfully afraid about current things that have happened in the court system, about how people get rammed through. And you're probably gonna think about, oh, the deck's stacked against me, there's nothing I can do. And that's true to an extent, but I learned this stuff when Obama was president and I beat crook judges, crook cops, crook lawyers, blah, 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 and I've won every single time. I've also used it during Trump and Biden. So if I can do this, why can't you? And they pull, they all, along the whole path, every single one of them, they all pull a bunch of scams. Cops, judges, all that stuff. They all pulled the scams they did, and I still won. You can beat them too. You just have to want it and to apply yourself. It's not hard. And in the end, justice will prevail. You just need to get smart. Getting smart and under, understanding how these things work will, will give you the courage to be able to fight them. Then you just have to be unrelenting. And sure, they might try to ram you through, rob you of your rights, and so on and so forth, but they did all that stuff to me too, and I still won. I promise you, things are not as they seem in the world today. Propaganda and lies are what keep people pushed down and hopeless and dependent. Now, people who are in power and who are overt crooks, they know they can't get everyone because the legal system is clogged and they just use one person as an example for the many. They don't have the numbers. They also have to maintain a facade of justice. And I'm not saying that every person who works for the government or wherever is automatically a crook because I guarantee you they're not. In fact, if you do this kind of stuff, you're gonna realize oh, some lawyers are actually pretty good. Same thing with judges. But if you are ever forced to go against these people, you can still win just like I have. And the moment the people, the majority of the people in this world, or at least the US, realize how things actually work, the facade is gonna break, and that is when things will start changing for the better. The awareness of the public has to change on many levels. The shame it will cause, the lack of faith they'll have in their rulers, all these things, they will force their hands to clean their own house, or to give up entirely because people are no, long, no longer willing to enforce bad laws. This could be done in many ways, but it starts with you and the choices you make right now. So remember, people in positions of power want you to give up before you even try. That way, they're gonna have no resistance. Like, why wouldn't they want that? Don't fall for it. Instead, learn what I say, force their hand, and make them work for it. You have rights, learn how to use them. And if you choose to not learn about your rights and how to enforce them, then I'm sorry, but you don't have any rights. But you know, you're basically just gonna be taking, taking it from ass to mouth for the rest of your life. You can also turn the tables on them under certain circumstances, which is what I've done to one of the crooked lawyers. Technically, what I did is I threatened to sue her uh, in state and federal court for depri deprivation of due process rights, but I mean, that's, that's another story. If you refuse to get smart, you are telling the world that you have no self-respect 
and that you're willing to take it from ass to mouth for the rest of your life. It's even worse because at one point, at some point in the future, you're going to get stabbed and you're going to get fucked in that hole too. So get smart now or shine your butthole and get your deep throat ready for what comes next. So all you need to succeed at any of this stuff is to acknowledge when you're wrong, humble yourself, and choose not to make those same mistakes again. You also need a little time, a little money, and some effort. And like I said, it's gonna be about five to six hours of video, and, and I feel confident saying that about two weeks of time and you applying yourself, you should be able to get similar or better results than me. Sounds crazy, but I promise you it all rests on that. So let's start with what the problem is. And this problem is going to be a very surprising thing to many people. It's not the government. It's not the politicians. It's not their political parties, whether left, right, or anywhere else. It's not the military, not the CIA, not the FBI, nor any other alphabet soup agency. It's not Hillary Clinton. It's not Trump. It's not Obama. It's not Biden. It's not anyone who comes after them. It's not the cops, it's not the governors, it's not the lawyers, nor the county prosecutors, even if they're, they're hired by, uh, even if they're, they're given bribe money by George Soros, he's not the problem either, nor his son Alexander Soros or whatever it is. It's not the corporations, it's not the big banks, it's not the IRS, it's not the Wall Street, it's not the media, it's not Hollywood, it's not big tech companies, and it's not insurance companies either, believe it or not. It's not the doctors, it's not small local government officials, nor school boards, or any person with petty power, like homeowners associations. The problem is the people. That's right, it's the people. You, me, well, not so much me, because I've already figured myself out and come to terms with everything, but it's the people. The people make up all the positions of power I just said. And people in those positions, they, re they represent the majority of the people who elected them. Therefore, the majority of the people are the root of the problem. It starts with you and everyone else. But you just need to focus on you. For example, when the war in Ukraine broke out in 2022, the left wanted to send as much money, resources, and disposable humans to them as possible. Now, the right didn't want that, but as soon as the, the thing in Israel in I think it was October 2023 happened, all of a sudden, they were willing to sacrifice their own kids to the fire so Moloch would give them a good harvest. It's okay when we do it is the motto of both of them. And I'm not saying this to piss off uh, religious people. I, I believe in Jesus, for example, but I don't believe in him the way that a lot of the people who are religious do. I see a completely different version of him, and I think that's a good standard to follow. You know, taking away the bias of whatever you've been taught by some hypocrite pastor with this, who says stuff to be able to justify anything. Both the left and the right do say stuff to be able to justify anything, and I'm against that. The only difference between both of them is the packaging, but they're both, like I said about Coke and Pepsi earlier, they're both gonna rot your teeth, so I suggest you don't drink either of them. And instead, to base yourself on the truth. We still live in a constitutional republic. You can see it right here at the beginning of the US Constitution, and again, in Article 4, Section 4. And that means you have rights, and they can't be taken away because two wolves voted against the one sheep, you know, on, on what's for dinner. That's what a democracy is, and we don't live in one. So whenever you hear about some serious injustice in the news, I guarantee you it's usually the overblown, and both sides are going to do things to try and control the narrative. And they're going to do things to hope you stay stupid, like the scandemic, where they convince the average person to think that the only thing keeping them alive was a Kleenex on their face, but their underwear couldn't even block a fart, they were hypocrites left and right. I mean, you want to go to a restaurant, they wanted you to have a uh, mask to just to get in, but you walk, you spend, t spend two seconds to get into your chair, all of a sudden you could take it off. It's like the box even said it did nothing on it. I mean, just the fucking hypocrisy. The point I'm trying to make is that regardless of whatever political puppet is in power, you can take your rights back and you don't need to wait for your guy, whoever that may be, to be able to get your rights back and to make things better for you. 
Now, I'm not trying to uh, piss people off with this, but a perfect example is people who bitch about being fat, but they're not gonna do anything about it. I mean, look at this guy right here. He did yoga and he changed his diet. And I have a lot in common with this guy, even though I've never been fat, but I used to have a lot of health problems in the past and I changed my diet, did a lot of this natural cleansing stuff and uh, fixed a lot of problems. And the majority of my problems went away. Again, no one is stopping you from doing things like that to improve your life. But to get into that state, that state of mind where you recognize these things who, about who and what really controls you, I need to get you to look in the mirror. That means you're gonna have to humble yourself. So what is the mirror? They're your false gods. They're the ones you elevate in your mind like your favorite political parties, your favorite celebritards, and anyone you outsource your opinions to instead of passing them through a bullshit filter that's based on the truth which is objective reality, things that we can see, smell, taste, hear, and touch. And technically, I'd say you have way more than those five senses because a lot of things that happened in my life where if the average person knew, they'd probably be like, what the fuck? For example, some real common ones that don't rock the boat that much are, uh, what about your sense of right and wrong? Your sense of justice, you know, love, you know, your emotions. These are all senses. You, you're not seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing, or touching them, but you have them. Or maybe your sense of up and down. Like let's say you're swimming underwater and you, you go upside down, you know, the blood's gonna rush to your head. You're not touching anything, but you can feel it. These people are all hypocrites and they say magic words like trust the science and other bullshit slogans so they can justify anything and to shut down any pushback on the spot. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about someone trying to be responsible, one-sided news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 They're the cult members who won't let you question the cult, like the scamdemic. The mirror is also, and more importantly, you know, starting with you, it's your narcissism, your false pride, your ignorance, your arrogance, and the way you act dishonorably to anybody, like the times you lie to yourself or other people so you can justify anything. That way you don't have to admit when you're wrong. It could also be your greed, your laziness, or anything else that points out your hypocrisy. So once you do that, you get rid of those bad things and then you set yourself to not do them again. And this principle applies to anything. And I say that this is the most important thing of all. If, if, if there's only one thing you look at in this video, this should be it. Because if you wanna win in court or anywhere else for that matter, you will have to think critically, swallow your pride, admit when you're wrong, own your mistakes, make good on them if you have to, vow to not make those mistakes again, then walk an honorable path for the rest of your life. It requires constant awareness and persistence. Otherwise, you might vote for or do some bad thing that's gonna screw other people over. If you refuse to do this, you're gonna get the same world we have today, where injustices and confusion are everywhere. So being honorable and responsible for everything you say and do is your best defense for anything in this world, whether you're in a court or out of court. Now let's get to it.
First, you're gonna to wanna to understand the battlefield you're on. And since this video is about feeding insurance companies, I'm gonna give you two things for that. First of all, there's a book by a company called Nolo. That's N-O-L-O. -O. I'll put it on the screen. I'm sorry I forgot the name, but uh, for me, I already knew the majority of the stuff in there. It's because I already, I'm gonna give you the second thing in a second, which is what I already knew. But um, when I read the important sections of that book, for me, it was just chapter seven and eight. I was just looking for some quick legal research off the bat so I could win, and it helped me. I'll get there in a minute. And then there's a website called howtowinincourt.com. Now, I'm gonna give you uh, an, an analogy of both of these. This book, the, the most important sections for me were chapters seven and eight. It helped give me some awareness of things that I didn't know before. It, now, this book is not bad, but how to win in court is more effective. Here's an analogy. Let's say someone breaks into your house at night and they're wearing a full suit of armor, you know, like knight's armor and they have a sword. Let's say there's a long hallway. You're over here, he's over here. And he, run, he breaks in, he, he runs at you screaming, I'm gonna fucking kill you. So he does that. The book is like saying, like trying to convince the guy to, hey, hey, I'll, I'll just, just, I'll give you whatever you want. Just don't hurt me. Howtowinincourt.com is the same situation, but you have a fully automatic machine gun. He's down range. There's nobody down there, so you can fire away and mow that fucker in half. Or you can give a warning shot, which in my case, that's, that's what I did with this insurance company thing. They recognized that, you know, this guy's serious. And that's how I won out of court, with a warning shot. So for everything that follows, I'm gonna give you a brief crash course on how this whole process works. It's probably gonna sound confusing for a little, for a number of people, but if you go through the How to Win in Court videos, you'll be able to understand everything I'm saying. All I have to do is watch them, apply yourself, and then you should understand all the jargon I'm about to use. But if you don't do that, just keep watching anyway, because I'm gonna make it understandable enough for the, for the average person. You, you should still be able to follow along and understand the point being made. Now here are the basics. First, you're gonna to wanna to rec start recording everything involving everyone in your problem. Because I only want this video to be dealing about, with insurance companies. Start recording everything. Every email, every phone call, everything you can. You're not screwed if you haven't done that. Uh, Cause like for me, late, I didn't start recording anything with these people until later on, which I'll, I'll start saying the story, the complete story later on. But um, even though I didn't start recording until later on, I still won, but it is important to record these things because if you ever have to sue them, you have, being able to prove the, the pattern of their, the, the bad things they're doing is very important if you ever wanna win in court. And any conversation can be recorded. Uh, if you have a cell phone, there are various cell phone programs for it. Or if you want something analog, I suggest you get something like a, uh, an audio recorder, like a Zoom H1N. I'll put it on the screen here. And yeah, just learn how to use it on YouTube. You'll be good. Now you need to learn the government structure. So you have three branches of government. You have the executive, legislative, and judicial. And each branch is not allowed to exercise the powers of the other, which is kind of like what I was saying earlier with the judge and the executive. And in the, in the judicial branch, you have uh, there's a structure to the court. At the bottom level is the circuit court. This is circuit court in your state. This is at the state level. So. Your state level's court system starts at the circuit court, then it goes to the appellate court, then it goes to the Supreme Court. So you have your circuit court of your county, of your district, actually. Then you have the appellate courts and Supreme. And there's something called case law, which I'll get to in a minute, but if you ever want to win in court, you're gonna need case law from the appellate and Supreme Court levels, from these two, not, not the circuit court level. And the federal structure is the same, generally the same, except it starts at something called district court, then there are appellate courts in there, and then there's the US Supreme Court. Now, uh, as I was just saying, at uh, both the state and federal level, there is something called case law. And case law, whether at the appellate or Supreme Court levels, are the things you're gonna want to be able to win. It's the most important thing because it's the main tool people use to try and screw you over. It can also save you pretty much on the spot if you know what you're doing and you're not dealing with an idiot who wants to get sued. Then there's the jury, so you're judged by 12 instead of by one because otherwise it's just trial by government. And concerning the jury, 
a very important thing is that you are allowed to vote your conscience no matter what the law is. Fija.org is a good source for that. It's F-I-J-A dot O-R-G. But you can look that up later. And the reason I said this stuff up earlier about humbling yourself is because if the jury is rotten, injustices are going to happen all the time. So even though you're allowed to vote your conscience and the judge might try and screw you over and say, no, you can't do that. First of all, you shouldn't even tell them, but you are because there's case law for it. And let's say the jury lets an obvious murderer go free like O.J. Simpson, which in case you didn't know, they got him on civil on a civil case to prove it. And there are some things he said and did that were strongly indicative, like, yeah, he knew he murdered them. So, yeah, if the jury's rotten, obviously it's going to signal to people in positions of power that, uh, hey, we can get away with this stuff too. And then rotten people are going to flood positions of power and we're going to be right back where we are today. Nothing will have changed. You need to have your neighbors back. So no matter who or what you're dealing with, the people need to be critical of everything that comes their way. And to call out bullshit when it happens, especially when it's unpopular. Then you want to list all the players involved. And this is true whether they are your enemy or not. It includes cops, judges, or any scumbag. And I'm not saying they're all bad, but it includes anyone you're dealing with along the whole path. It also includes people whom the government tries to launder your rights through, like Facebook, Twitter, and Gulag. And in case you didn't know, I'm going to put a link on the screen to show you something where a person is actually suing the government because he knows that's the case. And I'm telling you from personal experience, too, it's exactly how it is. The government launders censorship and other things and your other rights through third parties that get them to do their dirty work for them. So, yeah, if you want to you wanna look into that some more, just check out the links. Then you're going to want to know the law and your rights. You can find these in your state and federal constitutions, statutes, regulations for those statutes, the rules of procedure within those statutes, as well as case law. Now, maxims can help too because they're like true things that exist no matter where you are or what place in the world you're in. Like one person is not responsible for the actions of another, you know, unless there is some connection along the way. But you know, if there's no connection... Like, I'm not responsible for your willingness to rob a store. Like, you shouldn't be doing that, but you get the idea. There's also the rules of the court and the rules of evidence. And you can find all these rules in the U.S. Constitution, uh, your state's constitution, your state's compiled statutes, the law library at the courthouse, the courthouse website, and various legal research websites. And there are more laws, too, like... Uh, for example, there are municipal charters and executive orders, but that's that doesn't matter for any of this. Now, your ability to win in court and out of court is going to be based on your ability to understand these technicalities, and they will be the deciding factor on whether or not you win or lose. And I'll give you some examples later on because I'm going to give you actual case law within Illinois because currently that's where I live. And on top of that, if you do it right, you can even win before trial. So knowing these rules and these technicalities will give you the ability to either get or receive the dildozer treatment from Idiocracy. And in case you've never seen that show, you should go watch it now because it's the best documentary I've ever seen. And yes, I said documentary because it is a documentary. Comedy documentary. Then you want to know your enemy and his weak spots. Now if you're smart, you should always play to your strengths and hit your enemy at their weakest spot. And this is going to be by you looking at all the stuff I just said before. Uh, you know, with the technicalities and all that. And you're also going to want to look at your policy for your insurance company. You're going to want to read that and make sure your insurance company isn't trying to break it. Now, this strategy is where you take all your rights and all the facts from everything I said before, figure out how the insurance company is trying to rob you of those rights, and then use them to your advantage. Those are the weak spots in your enemy's armor. Now, for many situations, and including the insurance company I beat, Time might actually be on your side, and you can use that to your advantage. And in my case, I forced their hands, even though I was a, something called a third-party claimant. Uh, I forced their hand, and I used time to help beat them. And they eventually caved in. But I'll get more to that later. So in the case of governments trying to do crook shit against you, they generally scream at you, try and make you feel real bad, and then hope you're st and th then they'll give you a bunch of rope, tell you to hang yourself, and then hope you're stupid enough to do it. But you can ignore that stuff most of the time. And that's especially true with things like traffic tickets, which I'll get into in other videos if I make enough money from this and, and so on. Or people hire me for something and let me know they're interested. Tickets are usually 99.999% bluff. 
because I've been drunk driving once, so don't drive drunk, and if you do, I hope you get screwed. So, now I'm gonna tell you how I beat the insurance company outside of court. Now, I already knew the stuff I'm about to tell you, so none of this was my first rodeo, but I had never gone against an insurance company before. So all I did was follow a common sense process that I learned in how to win in court, because the book I mentioned didn't make them budge. I, I got some good information from it, and it's not bad, even though I gave the analogy I did earlier, but it didn't make them budge. So here's what happened. And before you make any move against any insurance company, do not do anything unless you know what you're doing because you will get shit tested by them. They did it to me and they cave because I know what I'm doing. Also, don't go into this with the intent of making money from the insurance company. To just try and get them to pay your bill, the full bill, as they're supposed to by law. And that's it. Do not try and screw them over because the only way you can ever get them to pay more is if you tell them that, hey, you guys are screwing me hard, you're making me do all this work, and now I'm gonna have to potentially sue you for it, which is another can of worms, and I'll get you some case law later on in, in Illinois for that, which, you, if you're in another state, you can get it in your state too, but you're gonna have to learn how, how to represent yourself in court. But um, it doesn't always go that far, so just relax. And you will have to be able to substantiate your losses. So, like, let's say uh, they're making you spend 20 hours and you could have been working, but you had to spend these extra 20 hours on them because, you know, they're, they're making you try to sue them. It, it's th things like that, that will actually get you at more money, but don't aim for that. Just be respectful or as respectful as you can. Because when I was dealing with this company, I, I was real nice at first, but, uh, then I started realizing, okay, these people are trying to fuck me over. Then, like, I was screaming my ass off. I was swearing everything. So, yeah, I, I might be presenting myself here to you in a more calm tone, but I, at a certain point, they even did it. I'll, I'll get there later. Now, this whole strategy is based off the actual cash value of your car, and that's the price that your car is worth in your general area. And as you, you can figure it out in your general area just by searching on the various websites. And you can also go to JD Power, that's the letter J and the letter D Power, as well as Kelly Blue Book. And I'll, again, I'll have some Illinois case citations of the law from appellate and Supreme Court level for this kind of stuff in the, on the blog for this video. So make sure you go to that blog. I'm gonna have this video there as well. And I'm not gonna put it on the, the video channels like Rumble, uh, bit shoot and odyssey you got to go to my site because they're, they're pretty long and yeah but this strategy will not work unless your the actual cash value of your car is higher than what they want to pay so if, you, if your car is worth the actual cash value is ten thousand but they only want to pay five thousand you can push them to to pay it you just gotta be persistent and just follow my steps All right, now before you ever threaten the, the insurance company, before you ever threaten to sue them, uh, you're gonna have to let them know what the law is. Now first, you can do it through email or a phone call and stuff like that. And the whole point of this is you, you wanna do these things and you wanna record it so you can prove it to the judge in the future that, hey, I followed these steps, I gave these people every easy out, I made them aware of the law, and so on and so forth. Because if you don't do this, the judge is going to be like, yeah, you're just some, you're just some idiot trying to, to make money off somebody. Like, fuck off. That's what's going to happen. And I've read a number of case laws, where, in Illinois at least, where people did that kind of stuff and they lost. But there's other case law where the, like very similar things that I'm about to tell you, which happened to me, they happened to other people. And uh, 
you'll find out. It's actually really good. Really good for the guy who won. So, which would, would have been like a, a mirror. He was, he's basically a mirror image of me and what, what, went, what I went through. But his was actually a lot longer. But the, the, the mirror, the point being made was still correct. And when you make the insurance company aware of the law and what they're doing to you and so on and so forth, they actually probably already know it, but they shit test you. And I'll get to that in a minute because uh, they did the same thing with me. All right, so here's what happened to me. And this is only part of the document I sent to them, but I'll show you the rest very soon. Uh, this is actually the, the second page, but I'm only putting this first because it will make this video flow better and I want you to understand what they actually did. So essentially, I told everyone on Erie's side from the beginning that I was new to everything, so I would need help. And every step of the way, I was denied by many, many people. They, they wouldn't answer my questions. Uh, they would they would evade everything. Erie knew damn well that this accident was not my fault. It was 100% Erie's responsibility, and they even admitted it. Just look at this thing on the page. This is one of the, uh, the uh, documents they sent me admitting they were 100% responsible. Technically, it was the guy who was responsible because he hit me, but I mean, hey, the insurance is, the reason why we have insurance is for these reasons. You know, the company takes on that liability. This company, Erie, they tried to get me to run around going to all these different places, tr essentially trying to find them the, the lowest price for them. And they wanted to send me to a place that, um, there are something called original equipment, OEM, original equipment manufacturer parts. These are the best parts for your car. There are also aftermarket parts, which have questionable reliability and questionable longevity and stuff like that. So if you're ever going to get your car repaired, you're going to want OEM parts. And these parts are more expensive. And the insurance company tried to get me to run around, go into all these different places to find the cheapest price, and they have these backdoor, I'm saying like backdoor deals with these other body shops nearby who um, they promise to kind of nudge people in their direction to give them more business, given that they're going to give them a lower price. And during this process, I went to uh, four places and... I finally stopped at the fourth one. Like I was real pissed off at the beginning because I was like, you guys should just be telling me where to go. I, I wanted this whole thing done with from the beginning. I didn't want to deal with all this crap. I didn't want to have to essentially be an unpaid worker for them and you don't have to be. But along this path, uh, after I was running around for them, at a certain point at the fourth body shop I went to, I dropped my car off there and the insurance company, Erie Insurance, they sent me a car rental. They, they had a, a guy from Enterprise come pick me up and they chose the car. And it was a 2023 Dodge Charger, brand new, a muscle car, like, funny enough. Long story short, throughout this whole process, they got me to relay messages back and forth from this person who works at Erie to another person who works at Erie to this other guy, back and forth at the body shop and it really, really stressed me out and confused me and they knew it. And I kept telling them over and over again, like, who the fuck am I supposed to deal with? And the, the insurance adjuster that I was dealing with, she's like the, the stereotypical ignorant girl, you know, like the kind of person who is going to, let's say she rear-ended you. It's like, I my car, but it's me, the wind did it. She would never give a straight answer. I would ask the same question three or four times. Then she would finally answer it. And it's like, you can't deal with these people. You can't deal with people like this. Now, when they rented me the car they did, uh, it was like about two weeks later, I, I have it in this document here, but um, it was about two weeks later or so, my phone was on. They stopped renting the car for me. And w when you rent the car from the company, they want you to give them a credit card or a debit card so that in case the insurance company stops paying, they're gonna charge you. So all of a sudden, without any warning to me, they stopped paying. And about three days later or so, I get a call from Enterprise, the, the car rental company, and they say, um, hey, uh, Erie stopped renting the car for you. You know what's going on? And I was like, what the fuck? So I started, I tried to call the adjuster. Oh, she's too busy. Then I try to find other people nearby who work for the same company. And 
uh, goes along the chain. There's a few couple hours of work there. So it goes along this chain and a short, like, like an hour or two after that, I finally get a call from, the, or a te either a call or a text from the adjuster. I'm sorry, it's been a couple months, but, and uh, this was back in March. So um, I finally get contacted by her and the adjuster is giving me all these bullshit excuses about what's going on. And, oh, I'm so sorry, it wasn't my fault. I don't know who did it. Uh, oops, oops, wasn't me. So, and then they, they paid it eventually, the rental, but... As time went on, uh, I tried convincing them and I was showing them, hey, this is the law. You guys are required by law to pay this. You have to or else I'm going to eventually sue you for it. And they kept saying, no, your car is only worth half of what, you actually, what it actually is. And I showed them the price of my car. Kelly Blue Book showed that the price of my car was worth between 7000 and ten, or, yeah, around 7000 to 10500 bucks within this area. And that, that's also uh, considering other websites for selling cars as well so they were claiming my car was worth half of what it actually was because they only wanted to pay like uh 3500 to 4000 some bucks for it and during this time i tried to get the adjuster to meet me in person because you know they didn't want to pay so i tried to get them to meet us me in the body shop in person to so they could look over the car and she's like no i'm not going to do it i'm like why well because I already know this thing and this thing, and this thing is only going to cost this much money. But the problem is, uh, I had a, I had a different car at, at a certain point or earlier in my life, and uh, there was this one time I knocked off. I was shoveling my car you know, you know, there's snow, and I knocked off that little nozzle that squirts out, you know, the window windshield wiper fluid. And I went to an AutoZone or wherever and got a little replacement, and it took like five minutes to replace but on the car i have now it was like because i did i had the same i had the same problem with that car um that one took like an hour and a half to two hours because i had to research how to do it and i had to take apart all these little itty bitty pieces because it's just built different and this adjuster is saying oh, this body shop is wrong because uh this thing doesn't take that long i've done it before as if she's like some expert mechanic you know she's not so they didn't want to show up and consider how much it's actually worth and be like, okay, that's reasonable, that, that's not. And I actually ended up agreeing with her on some things, but um, the scams they pulled make me go, yeah, I'm not trusting any of you guys. So then on my birthday, uh, nobody else knew this, but the insurance company probably did because the guy who hit me, he had a, a copy of my license or he at least took a picture with his phone. Um, on my birthday, I went to the, the body shop and I was, the day before or so, I was talking to the adjuster and I was basically just ready to give up. I was like, yeah, fuck it, you guys are causing me all these problems. They, they took way too long and this is a month in. So I'd, they'd been renting me the muscle car for a month up to this point and they had done the thing with uh, cutting off the car rental and so on. So I went to the body shop and I had told the, the adjuster the day before I said, hey, uh, will you guys pay for the tow to take it to this other body shop that you guys want me to take it to? And she said, yes. So when I was at the body shop that day on my birthday, um, one of the workers there decided to say, hey, let's call her up and put her on speakerphone. And I was like, yeah, good idea. Looks like I wanted to you know, put the pressure, put the heat on her. And um, the body shop I, I had my car at, they were giving me details about how these insurance companies work and the thing, the tricks they do. And one of the ladies there, she brought up a good point to uh, make sure you get something from, whatever you get from them, make sure you get it in writing. And I had forgot about that. Like I, I knew it, but I, I wasn't thinking about it because I was so stressed out. And I had so many other things I was doing at the time. So uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, that's a, that's a good, good call. So they got her on the phone and we started going over what each item, what, what each part they were going to fix was. And none of it was OEM. It was all aftermarket parts. Someone at the insurance company was supposed to be dealing with the body shop and they were supposed to go back and forth. They're like, okay, yeah, you're right on this price. I, I get it. You're wrong on this and so on and so forth. They never did that. And they, this is the time where I was relaying all these messages back and forth between them. And it was stressing me out. So I asked them if they would pay the current bill of the body shop I was already at 
for all the work they had already done and documenting it and taking it apart and so on and so forth. She said no. Now I knew from that NOLO book I told you about earlier that they are supposed to do that, but they didn't. She didn't want to. And that's when I started swearing my ass off and she hung up. I said all the best words. I felt good about it too. From the day I got hit by another car, Erie had told me to go to body shops in my area and find prices. And when I went to this, the current one at Sharp, I was doing what they said. This was the fourth place I went to and I was doing what they said. And on the, the day I was about to give up, it was my birthday, um, and they wanted me to pay the bill for Sharp. Like, dude, I was doing everything they said and I shouldn't be the one who gets fucked because, because of it. And I had read all these horror stories online during that time where people were dealing with the same kind of crap as me. I should not be the one who pays because they told, I did what they told me to do. Like, it, it's stealing. Oh, and hey, a uh, funny thing, their Better Business Bureau page is terrible. It is horrible and it's loaded with like situations just like mine. Now, when you're dealing with your insurance company, I want you to do something very similar to this. Be honorable, be respectful, try and work with them. Some of them really might not know what's going on or how the law works or anything like that, but make them aware of it. And when you, as you document this in the future, you will be able to prove a pattern to the judge if you ever have to sue them. So if your case is any, any different, make sure you read any agreements you know, that you made with them earlier and then just attack their weak spots in it. And remember that if you do any of this, if you ever have, you ever unfortunately get in a car accident, uh, know that you do not have to run around finding them the cheapest price and you do not have to settle for aftermarket parts unless the actual cash value of your car is worth less than what the repair price is. So, you know, if your car is worth five grand, you know, according to actual cash value, and the repairs are 10,000, you're not gonna get that. And like, I actually kind of agree, but there are more details like of that uh, in other sources, but I'm not gonna go there right now because it's not really important. You can also go to whatever repair place you want. You can even stop searching after the first one. All right, so because of all this stuff, and to show them I was serious, I sent something called a notice of intent via certified mail with return receipt, and it was notarized so I could prove they got it. This is what it looks like. Now, you don't have to do it exactly like this, but the point is uh, there's a principle in the law called substance over form, which basically means like uh, what you're trying to say is more important than the way you're trying to get it across. Now, it looks like this. This is the first page, and before you start, there's nothing magic to this. It's just using common sense, and my goal was to sell this issue outside of court. So I went a bit more over the top, hoping that it would scare them into giving them now. Because the way I wrote this, what I'm about to show you, is very similar to the way that an actual lawsuit is filed. And my, my goal of doing, my, my intent of doing that was to show them that, hey, I actually have knowledge on this stuff. Fuck with me and I'll make you pay for it. And again, the reason I followed all these steps is because I wanted to be able to prove a pattern to the judge in the future if I had to sue him. And you will have to do the same. Therefore, I would be getting the court to step in and make him pay up. And this will make you look way better in the long run to everyone involved, to the judge, and if there's ever a jury, which there should not be, because you can win before you ever go to trial, and the, a jury can be denied to them if certain issues that were, I'll get to case law in a minute, which will tell you that. And this will make you look better in the long run because it will prevent your case from getting dismissed as well. And like I said earlier, I read a number of cases, at least in Illinois, where people tried to they were, they were fighting the insurance company and they were essentially trying to win by ambush or ambush. They didn't follow these steps. They didn't give them another chance. They didn't give them the easy way out. Trust me, just do this. Give them the notice of the law. Tell them this is how things work. If you don't do this, you're causing me all these problems. If you don't do this, I'm gonna sue you. My strategy was centered on a bunch of things, but it was particularly based on the actual cash value of my car. First, they were legally liable to pay up to 100% to of the actual cash value of my car. And their driver and Erie Insurance both admitted that it was the dri their driver's fault and Erie Insurance takes responsibility. Second, they were on the hook for renting me the, the muscle car they were, which again, I didn't choose, but they rented me a brand new Dodge 20, or 2023 Dodge Charger. And at the end, they actually rented it for two months. They literally spent over 2,000 bucks to rent me the car. And third, this third part of my strategy, 
they did all the other shit before and it looked criminal. For Again, for me, because I was very busy at the time and I, was, I had all this other crap going on. All right, there's the adjuster and then there she has like a boss above her. And I thought this guy was like the final boss, you know, like in a, in a video game. But uh, turns out he's not. Point being, I got to this mini boss here and uh, he was basically giving me the same shit as the adjuster was, you know, saying, oh, your car is only worth half what it actually is so they can get out of paying the bill. And because I was very busy, uh, after being enraged on a call with the guy, I was really pissed off at him and I was trying not to swear at him because I had only, I, I talked to him for like a minute the day before and then there was that day and he didn't do too many things to piss me off, but I was so enraged at him that I just hung up and then I told him, because I had already sent him my notice of intent. It's a 20 page document and you, you probably wanted to write anything that long, but like I was saying, I wrote this as if it was an actual lawsuit and I, I wanted that to scare them into paying up. So after he enraged the crap out of me, I told him, let's speed this up because I don't want to waste your time and I hope you don't want to waste mine. My position is not changing. Everything I want in my demand for compensation in my legal threat is still what I'm going to do. And these next couple months, I'm going to be a bit busy. So until then, you guys are probably going to be still forced to rent me the car you are. And it's going to be about a month before I get a verified complaint set up. But if I get more business during then, I'm going to go with my business instead of doing going to sue you. So... There's a two-year uh, statute on limitations. So, uh, yeah, I'm not backing down. I'm going to sue, and I'm done talking. Look, I'm sorry, you know my point, and I'm done talking. Basically just be a dead weight to them so, so that they would uh, rent, me another, rent me the muscle car they were for another three months, which would have been, uh, let's see, yeah, it'd be about 3000 bucks extra from the 2000 they had already spent, plus they would have to pay for my car, plus any attorney fees as well. And I figured my best strategy was to just be a dead weight to them. And hopefully they'd settle out of court. And this was my way of forcing their hand to see if they were going to be stupid enough to keep going. Because they were actually paying 36 bucks a day to rent the car. And it was almost two months at this point. And like they literally spent over 2,000 bucks renting me this car. And if they were going to be stupid enough to keep it up, you know, they're going to pay way more. In the end, after I won out of court, because... Uh, shortly after this, they were finally like, okay, we're just going to pay this guy's full bill, the 6421 I think it was, uh, plus another 2500 or so. And um, so they did that, and that was it. In the end, they literally spent almost twice as much as they would have had to if they had just paid it up front. So at the top are our names, the claim number, the current date and date of loss. And further on down, I have the notice of intent. And this is basically just, hey, this is what I'm gonna do. Do this or else you're gonna regret it. Like, and I'm being a bit of a dick here. You might think, if, if you pause the screen, you read this stuff, you're gonna be like, holy shit, man, this guy, like, what the fuck? You actually did that? Yeah, yeah, because th they literally did shit that it was, I swear, it has to be criminal. Cutting the car rental off like that, when they're legally liable to do it, fuck them, man. Pieces of shit. So basically, I took my big swing and dick, slapped him in the face, and that was that. And notice this part right here that gives them at least two weeks. You don't have to give them two weeks, but I do suggest you give them a reasonable amount of time to deal with this because I, I sent them a 20 page document. So I think two weeks is plenty for them to at least read the first page. Oh, and funny thing. Uh, the, the same exact day I sent this in, in snail mail, or technically it was USPS priority mail, the same day, literally about an hour and a half after I sent it, all of a sudden they have the money and they wanted to pay it too. I told them no because you guys fucked me too hard. You made me waste so much time. You're going to pay up more. And they did. Out of court too. Now this part right here, the verification, this is where you notarize it. That means you go to a... Libraries usually ha usually have them. Banks, uh, I know U U UPS stores they have them as well. There there are probably many other places, but just search on uh, Google Maps or whatever for notary. That's N O T A R Y. 
and this is a, a legal thing, so I could prove that I sent them this notice and I could prove that they got it, or at least someone legally responsible picked it up and signed for it, and then I got the receipt back. And this is another important step if you want to be able to sue them in court, because I want to show the judge eventually that I gave them every easy out, but they ignored it. Now this verification is just, and just pause the screen and read it. You'll figure it out, it's not that hard. Then on page two, I wrote my summary of issues. And then I started with my arguments on page three. And all this is is a step-by-step -step process of everything that happened the whole way, from day one to where I, where I decided to actually sue him for it. So after I describe this whole argument, then I go to the monetary damages. And this is where I am substantiating all the hell they put me through. And you're going to want to do the same thing if you want to be able to get more money from them. Again, don't do this unless they are really trying to fuck you over. Don't try to make money from them. It, be reasonable and be honorable with them. So uh, my monetary damages, I, I substantiated it and I could, and I put all my evidence throughout this whole thing and I, I showed it at the back end of it. So this document is actually, was only about 11 pages for me, but could be different for you. Maybe you're not dealing with the same thing, but uh, you get the idea, it's just logic. This is what I did, this is what you did. Hey, you're fucking me over. Stop it, this is the law, okay, I'm done. So at the very end of this document, not counting the, the evidence, I make a section called demand for compensation, and it's just a, a rehash of what I said at the very front in the notice of intent, which is pay up or else. And again, at the very end, I have all my exhibits, my evidence, my text messages, my emails, Evidence of their guilt, evidence of how much money I could have made if I, I didn't have to deal with this bullshit. And though I, although I didn't put this in there at the time because I didn't know it, I was trying to deal with these, these, pro, these people as fast as I could. Before this video, I actually researched some law because I wanted to help give you a weapon against them. And uh, again, this is what I'm about to tell you is Illinois law, so it, it might, it's probably not going to, or it's not going to work for you unless you're in Illinois, but. I can pretty much guarantee you that your state is going to have similar statutes accordingly. And uh, here's an, uh, to help you along your way, here's a case site from the Illinois Supreme Court on the, act the definition of actual cash value. Now you could also use a, a, a law dictionary like Black's Law Dictionary and it'll show you various Supreme Court sites and I got some on here and I'll put them on the blog for this video too, but you get the idea. You're going to need these to be able to prove your point. And, Again, I know you're probably, if you don't know how to represent yourself in court, you're probably not going to understand what any of this means, but I promise you it's very important. And in Illinois, there is a law called 215 ILCS 5-115, and it's for attorney fees. If the insurance company is giving you an unreasonable delay in settling, settling a claim, and it appears to the court that such action or delay is vexatious and unreasonable, like claiming that my car is worth half it actually is, and all the other shit they did, cutting off the, the car rental, which they're supposed to pay for, and trying to get me to pay the bill for the, the body shop so I could send it somewhere else and then get charged there again when, uh, if that company didn't want to do it for free, and then get charged whatever there and find out, oh, hey, the insurance company doesn't want to pay them either because they're giving the same price. The court may allow as part of the taxable costs and the action re reasonable attorney fees, other costs, plus an amount not to exceed any one of the following amounts. And another important point in Illinois law is uh, I have another case site called Cook versus AAA Life Insurance Company. It's from 2014, and it's, it's an appellate court case. Just look at the site on the screen, and I'll also put it on my, my site, on the blog for this. And it's referencing 215 ILCS 5 155 
subsection 1. And the important part of this concerning this vexatious and unreasonable thing, it says, in other words, its purpose is to punish, its purpose, meaning this law, is to punish insurance companies for vexatiously delaying or rejecting legitimate claims by holding insurers responsible for the expense resulting from the insured's efforts to prosecute the claim. Meaning, it's a, it meant, meant to deter insurance companies from forcing their victims from having to sue them. So to continue, and discouraging them from using their superior finance, financial position by delaying payment of legitimate contractual obligations, meaning the, the insurance policy, to profit at the insured's expense, which is exactly what they try to do to me. And I have another case from in Illinois from appellate court. It's called Emerson versus American Bankers Insurance Company. Just check it on the page. And the, the most important part I want to bring up is this section. Examples of conduct found to support a finding of bad faith include failure to adequately investigate a claim or denial of the claim without adequate supporting evidence, which is what they did to me. They didn't even want to meet. Failure to evaluate a claim objectively I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, and unreasonably low settlement offers. Now, in Illinois, there's some case law for this. The case is Negron versus United Equitable Insurance Company. It's from 2019. What I'm about to give you is the order of that, of that case. Okay, this is, means, that basically means this is what the insurance company has to do. They must or else. And if Negron, the guy who got screwed uh, in the beginning, if, uh, if he wanted, he could actually get the sheriff to auction off their assets, you know, the insurance company assets and so on and so forth, if they didn't just pay up, like, given he knew how to do it. But yeah, that's a real thing if you ever heard of sheriff's auctions. That's how they work. So I'm reading. And remember, this is, uh, I think it was appellate court. Yeah, it's appellate. Okay. It says held. Part one is held. The trial court's judgment was affirmed where the plaintiff was properly awarded the replacement cost of his vehicle under the policy. Defendant unreasonable, defendant meaning the insurance company, because Negron sued the insurance company, unreasonably and vexatiously delayed the settlement of plaintiff's claim, which uh, I forgot the exact details, but I think it was for something like, like, it was more than half a year, I think. And they played all these scams the whole way. The attorney fees awarded to plaintiff were reasonable which uh, I think it was, it was $45,424 under that law I just said, the 215 ILCS 5-155 being vexatious and unreasonable because they were basically forcing the guy to sue them so they would fix his car. And the trial court did not enter an improper remitter. But uh, this is an appellate court case. They originally actually gave the guy more at the, the circuit court level, level, which is the bottom, but on appeal, because the, the insurance company appealed it. Uh, on appeal, the guy actually got less, but he still fucked the insurance company over because they screwed him. And uh, I read through the whole case, and some of it was kind of reasonable, which is, again, another reason why I, I wanted you in the beginning of this video to get you to be able to look in the mirror because you have to think very critically, and if you can't, things like this might happen where you actually get less than you're supposed to. But the guy still won. And if you use this, this law, if you're given you're in Illinois or whatever state you're, you live in that has a similar law, you're going to want to find things like this to say, hey, this is the law. Don't fuck me. Don't force me. And this might help convince them, which you would put in your notice of intent. I didn't put these, these laws in my notice of intent because I didn't know at the time and I wanted to save time on research because uh, these got about 10 pages right here for making this video and I spent maybe like 10 hours constructing it. And uh, yeah, I wanted to save time, but I, I also want to fuck the insurance company and give you a weapon against them. So it's worth it if you ask me. Now I'm going to put 
a number of these very good ones on my site. So you can just copy it, look up the case site yourself, and so on. But again, if you're in any other state, you're going to want to see cases in your state from the appellate or Supreme Court level with things like this. And uh, I found these by looking at, uh, I searched for terms, actual cash value. And then once I got that, I did a further refine these results. And I put things like insurance company, you automobile, car, stuff like that. You can also search backward because these legal research websites, they generally have things where you can, um, you can start with the law and then work backwards and everything is organized by subject matter. Like, uh, for example, let's say you, you found this, this law that I, that I was just talking about and you wanted to see how it applied to insurance cases and then health cases and then so on and so forth. And this Negron versus United Equitable Insurance Company and Cook versus AAA Life Insurance, they were both completely on point with what I was dealing with. And these are the kinds of things that if I ever had to go through this again, this is what I would threaten them with before going to court. And again, I suggest you check my site for other case sites here. So uh, I will put a link in the description or wherever you're watching this. Just go there, check it out. Oh, bad faith is another very, very good term to search for. So now you have two options. You can either shine your butthole and get your deep throat ready for what comes next and continue taking it from ass to mouth for the next 500 years, or you can apply yourself for a couple weeks and follow Giga Chad on the path to salvation and the war against the lizard people. That way we can fix society to the way it was meant to be. So resist evil in all forms, wherever you're at, with whatever you're dealing with. And again, this is why I suggest you, you learn how to represent yourself in court, because when you, when you know these things, people can't fuck with you and you can end problems before they even begin. So have some self-respect. Thanks, and if you like this sort of stuff, consider subscribing to the RSS or Adam feeds on my website. That will let you automatically know if I put anything new out without having to be logged in anywhere or remember any passwords. I'm a programmer that can create custom websites that can go from the code I made, a competitor to anything, something completely new, or any type of custom news prompt that you can sell. Whether they have to run on a website or anywhere else, like a private server in your home, a store, something only for your computer, a web browser add-on, or whatever you need, or wherever you need. Or if you need any graphics, logos, CSS or SVG animations, photography, image editing, video production, video editing, 3D set extensions, animations, or special effects, or things like pamphlets, full business cards to be printed, don't be afraid to contact me. Just check my website at cybersanctum.com and use the contact form at the bottom.